All right, coming at you here before round three. Not a ton to say. Uh, I just had white and then black, so I think I have white next, but it's not entirely clear. Um, yeah, other than that, not a ton to say. It's been fun to sort of talk to some of the other players who I'm starting to get to like know some more of the people now that I've been here a few times, which has been fun. Um, but we've only got a couple minutes until the next round, and I need to go use the restroom. So I don't know that I have a ton more to say other than that. Um, but hello to everybody out there watching. Again, as I mentioned in a previous video, if you ever see me at a tournament, uh, come, come say hi. Um, all right, I'll see you guys after the round. Okay, so we got round three going. Uh, we have White against Lax Sharma, who uh, was an unrated player, though I think online he's you know rated 11-something in Rapid. Um, and at the end of the tournament, he was rated 1283 uh, provisional on those four games. I think this was his first tournament. Anyways, we're White. We play E4. We're an E4 player. Opponent plays E5 and F4. We're a King's Gambit player. He takes F4. Knight F3. We know we know this song and dance. And Knight C3, which is called the McLeod defense, which is not something that I'm particularly uh, familiar with. I think now I need to remember that in this position, I need to play D4. Um, apparently, then the best response for our opponent. So what I'm supposed to play is D4, uh, D5, uh, and then I think takes. Uh, and then knight take or queen takes, and then we're already regaining our pawn. Uh, we can play here or there, gaining a tempo on the queen first. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the queen's not going to be able to hang on to this pawn. You can't go like here, um, because then we could play queen e2 check, and this this is better for white. Um, however, I was like, ah, I could play here, I could play there. Those are the two reasonable moves. Uh, those are moves one and four for the computer. The other moves that the computer likes is knight c3 and d3. Um, but I play bishop c4, which apparently gives up some of our advantage, but this is almost always where you want the bishop. Um, and there are going to be a lot of times where the computer says, okay, play knight a5, come come get this bishop. And that's actually why in the McLeod defense, now that I'm thinking about it, that uh, you don't want to play bishop c4 right away. This knight is going to be able to go here to trade the bishop off, uh, especially, so for example, you go here, ways to save the bishop are to move it back, which eh, or you can move up here, but then you get this, and now you've wasted another tempo, you've allowed your opponent to play c6. Uh, there's no knight here that they're stopping from playing, so this is obviously better for black. So I guess we'll remember in the future when the knight is here, it's going to be able to move to a5 to come get this bishop. So when that happens, don't move the bishop to c4. Fair enough. We've learned. Uh, so our opponent plays d6. Uh, so this is looking like a not that great version of the of the Fisher defense now. And there are several good moves for us. Probably the best one is d4, which takes the center, which we do. So now we've kind of transposed into where we should have been before. And our opponent plays uh, g5, which is the, the correct move. Once we move this pawn, we're threatening to pick this pawn back up. And we respond with h4, which is the canonical response here. Um, and it, again, once our opponent played knight h5, it just says, look, if he takes here, you can take, uh, like, you, it, you're you're going to lose. It's not going to, you know, if you go here, then it says what the best move is, uh, bishop d3. And then I guess you can trade here if you want at some point, or you can play g4, fine, which is apparently totally equal. But my opponent plays just bishop g4, and he says, ah, I can come get this knight. And uh, the best move for me here is just to take this pawn. And you can't play queen takes because then uh, knight takes, bishop takes, and here. And I've, I've just won a piece. So, like, you're not... Well, let's see. So, here, 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 here. Yeah, you j I've just won a piece in that variation. So, obviously, that's totally winning for white. And if we go back a few moves... Um, yeah, the only reasonable response is apparently for them to play bishop g7. Uh, what happens if they take here? Then, yeah, then we just play queen takes and we're like plus 1.7. Um, but I was like, mm, I think I see a tactic. There's an x-ray that's happening here, but that can benefit me or my opponent. If I play bishop takes, king takes, knight check, king goes back, queen takes the bishop, I've won two pawns for the price of nothing. <laughs> so that seems that seems good for me. However, bishop takes f7, cool, king takes f7, and you'll see that this is only minus two-ish, so this is not the worst mistake in the world. It wants me to play h takes g5 now. It just wants to say, like, ah, that's, mm. you sacrificed a bishop for a couple pawns uh, and to bring your opponent's king out of the center. This is not the worst thing in the world, but I played knight takes g5. My opponent wrote king e8 on their sheet and then looked at the board and then reached to grab the piece and then put their hand back down, scribbled out what they wrote, and wrote queen takes g5. And this is why this fails, right? So now, obviously, if I take here, my queen's undefended. Doesn't work for me. So now it's minus 17. So now it's just, ah, okay, I've got to trade queen. So takes, takes, and takes. But I sacrificed a bishop, and then I sacrificed a knight, and my opponent only sacrificed their bishop. So I'm down a piece for a pawn, which is not not good. So this is about minus 4.5. So at this point, I said, okay, I'm playing an opponent that's similar-ish strength. Uh, I'm rated a little higher on chess.com, but, like, you know, they're, they're playing well. They saw through my tactics. 
they calmed down enough in order for that to make sense. Um, and I was like, okay, for the rest of the game, I have to play as trickily as possible in order to be able to win a piece back. Like, they saw through that tactic um, because I messed up, but, like, I'm behind now. I can't just play normally, so I have to try not to trade pieces, and I have to play as tricky as I can. So my opponent plays knight takes d4, and I play bishop takes f4, obviously, trade pawn for pawn. I'm still defending this, totally fine. My opponent plays h5, and the reason that they played h5 is what they like for me to do is to play g takes h6, which is not the worst thing in the world according to the computer, but it's not great. But the trouble there is bishop takes, bishop takes, uh, I don't know, rook takes, rook takes, knight takes. And you can see it's still minus five, and my opponent's just clearly up a piece for a pawn. So I have this pawn, and my opponent has this knight. And I'd rather have that knight than this pawn, that's for sure. Especially given that this rook is going to be hard to get out. So, all that being said, I saw that I could take on passant, but that just, it activates my opponent's pieces. And right now, my opponent's knight can't move, right? My opponent's bishop can barely move. And even if it does, it's staring at a pawn that it can't take. And my opponent's rook can't really move. It can't go up here, so it would have to play, like, h7, and then where is it going to go from h7? Like, g7? That's not going to do anything for it. So, like, no, I'm not taking that pawn. Knight c3. I need this knight to be in the game in order for me to be able to do anything. Uh, my opponent plays king e7. Now, what I'd like to be able to do is play here check and be able to come get this, maybe come get this rook, right? Um, and the other thing that I would like to be able to do is um, if takes, takes, then I can take with the bishop, the rook has to move somewhere, and then I can uh, take this. Oh, I can take the knight, actually. Yeah. So things are relatively equal now. And actually, it wanted me to throw in g6, so the computer says, okay, it's not quite equal. But basically, I was like, look, take, and then I'll fork your pieces, right? To totally reasonable. And my opponent says, mm, no, thank you. King g7. Now, obviously, if I take and uh, my opponent takes back, first of all, if I take here, my opponent can get their bishop out. So I don't want to do that. Uh, it's going to induce further trades of pieces. In fact, probably king takes. And th this is not going great for me. Um, so I play king d2 because I'd like to get my king up into the middle of the board. And again, if my opponent takes, then I get to take back with this fork. So my opponent plays rook e8, attacking this pawn. And I play rook ae1, defending the pawn again. And then my opponent plays knight c6. And so now that this knight has moved, um, if takes, then when I take with the bishop, first of all, the knight is defending. So if... Uh, uh, sorry, if nothing takes, takes with the bishop, they can play knight takes, rook takes, rook takes, and I'm just down a rook, so it's just, I'm, I'm losing a piece if I try and take that back. So I have to do, I have to do something here with this tension. Now, obviously, I can't push, because rook takes, rook takes, king takes, I've given up another pawn for nothing. That doesn't do anything for me. So I said, okay, like, if there are going to be some trades that happen here, that's totally fine, but I, I don't, the other thing is that I don't want to initiate them, because then rook takes, rook takes, um, and that causes some, I mean, Again, probably, yeah. What? Uh, bishop takes. Bishop takes. King takes. Like, again, this is not this is not great for me. So I said, okay, we're we're not going to take that pawn. The computer says taking that pawn is best, but I'm playing against a human. So I played g4. Um, now the computer just says, okay, play h4. Cool. Now you've got a pass pawn. You can push it. Totally, totally fine, bro. Uh, but what I what I was thinking is, okay, my opponent gets lazy and they take, which they're going to have the opportunity to do a bunch of times, and I get to take this rook. Uh, now, obviously, my opponent did not take that. Otherwise, you know, perhaps the game would have got a little better. They played knight takes. And the problem now is that they're attacking this pawn with something other than this pawn. So, again, if I play nothing, they can just play knight takes here. And now, like, that that's not, this is not going well for me. So when they played knight takes, I thought, okay, well, I have to do something. So I played bishop takes. Again, we're still at minus two. Rook takes. And now they're attacking this pawn, this g6 pawn. So I can either play here, and you know, I, in theory, I could take here, but then like takes and takes and takes and takes, and this this pawn's kind of a goner, and this is not good for me. So I have to trade this rook too, rook takes, and then d takes because there's nothing else they can play with. And now there's bishops finally going to be able to get out. And I think in this position, the computer wants me to take here like already, um, and I don't quite do that. I play knight e4 because I want to restrict my opponent, so I want to discourage them from moving this knight because then I'm going to be able to get this check in and continue to be able to push. And it is still true that if they take here, then I take with this rook. So I'm just trying to leave it as long as possible. Like, no, 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 no. Like, take take my g4 pawn. Please. I beg you. You could do it. My opponent plays bishop g7. And it is at this point that uh, I have to play g takes h5. Now, we've actually gotten it all the way back down to minus 1.4. 
So we're down a piece for a pawn, but these two pawns are so strong, and these pieces are so poorly coordinated over here. This is great. Now, obviously, I can't leave it here because if I play some nothing move, now they can take here because when I take this rook, it just trades back. So like that doesn't that doesn't help me at all. Um, so I do have to take there, and yeah, we're we're doing okay. Now our our play has to be about pushing these pawns. So we play my opponent plays ninety seven, um, and I play h six. You know, attacking this bishop. Now I I know that these are all kind of fake threats, but fine. Bishop f eight. Um, and then I play knight f6 check. I couldn't figure out exactly what to do here. Knight f6 check is probably not the best move. Knight c5 is apparently a slightly better try coming to come pick up this pawn. Um, you know, material is material. You know, if these pawns don't survive, maybe I can trade all the ones over here. And if I can trade everything, then they're just going to have one piece. So, like, that's fine. As long as I can get, you know, I think rook and piece versus rook on the board is uh, also a draw. I'm not entirely sure about that. But if I can get it to uh, king and bishop versus king, then, like, it'll be fine. So I should have played here to come grab this pawn. Um, I can also play king e2 here, but I played knight f6 check. Um, wanting to be able to check, my opponent does something, and then I'll be able to push, and then I can, you know, perhaps wheel my uh, wheel my rook over to be able to push the other pawn. So, fine. My problem is king e6, and I realize that I can't, you know, I could push here, but that's not really, that's not really going to do it for me, and the computer agrees. In fact, the computer already just wants me to play rook f1, and just go like, look, your pawns are defended, it's fine, this bishop's not going anywhere. This bishop does suck. Like, that is absolutely true. Um, so it says, you have time, you can just play rook f1. But I play king e3. And my opponent, one thing that I did see was my opponent played knight d5 check, uh, takes, king here, and c4. Now, obviously, if my opponent takes here, then I get to play king e4, and now I'm playing for the advantage. They're up this bishop, which they can finally get out if they want, but now I get to actually run my king in to support these pawns. So I actually have the advantage here. Um, and my opponent can also play uh, king e6, but then when I play king e4, cool, now all our pieces are, uh, are in a box, and I, I've uh, developed further on this side. It's going to be hard to target this weakness, etc. I can play... Uh, you know, my opponent plays something like rook g8, I play h7, they play rook h8, um, I play rook f1, like, we're, we're in a fine spot here. Um, however, my opponent did not play knight d5 check, allowing us to trade knights, which would have been good. They played knight f5. And so originally my, think, my thought would be to go here, but then knight fork, and obviously I'm losing my rook, so that's no good. So then the thought is, okay, well, I can't go here or here, because the, the pawn is defending them. If I go here, I get forked, so I can't go there either. Um, if I go here, I get forked on this pawn and this pawn, so I can't go there. If I go here, I'm okay, so we'll leave that that one alone. Uh, if I go here, I think I'm okay. If I go here, it's the same fork, so that doesn't do anything for me. And I think if I go here, I'm okay, except that this bishop comes with check. So um, I played king f2 regardless, thinking I do need to eventually get my king up and around. Uh, this is kind of the wrong idea. My opponent plays bishop c5 check, which I saw. And I played king e1, because again, most of the squares that I go to get, get, uh, forked by the knight in one way or another, which is not great for me. Uh, especially given the fact that my, that the knight can actually get, like, all the way in there to check and pick up this pawn again. But now I'm in a position where, okay, you're not gonna be able to fork my stuff and it'll be fine. My opponent plays bishop e3, uh, targeting this pawn. And so I play h7. Uh, my opponent takes the g5, uh, and I play knight g8. And I had recognized that this was losing, but I was like, look, we're going to try and trick our opponent here. Um, you know, I don't I don't resign. <laughs> um, I guess I resigned in the previous thing. But in, in general, in principle, if I feel there's any life in the position at all, I don't resign. So my opponent plays king f7. Um, I played rook f1, trying to target this knight. My opponent plays king g6. Now they're targeting the knight and the pawn, so I play rook h1, defending the pawn once more. My opponent takes the pawn. I take, I take. Um, and I play king up because I want his king to be back here taking this uh, knight. He goes there, and I begin to move up. I need to block this pawn if that's uh, that's at all going to be possible. Uh, king f7, king e4, king f6, and I play c4. Again, just trying to play to try and move all my stuff. If I can eventually get everything off the board with a knight and a bishop, if I can trade all these pawns, there's no way my opponent can make me with a knight and a bishop. I can't make people with a knight and a bishop. They can't make me with a knight and a bishop. No one at my level can do that. My opponent plays knight d6 check. Um in theory, picking up this pawn, so I play king d5, so it's not picking up that pawn. My opponent takes the c4 pawn, just giving up the piece for the pawn, and is like, look, I'm up another piece now, so it's fine. I can sacrifice the material. I want to get this rolling down the board. And I was like, that's weird, but okay. So I took um, so I took there, and my opponent plays bishop f4, um, and I play b4, because again, I want to move all the stuff to where I can't move anymore. My opponent plays king e6, and I play a4. I'm like, look, I'm just going to push over here. You do have to do something. My opponent plays king d6. I play b5. I'm like, look, what are you going to do? He plays a6. And I realize that there's now going to be a cubby for my king to be able to tuck into if I trade these pawns. So I play b takes. My opponent plays b takes. And I play king b4. And so this is made in 14. Obviously, you just push the stuff, stuff down the board and no big deal. But I play king, uh, my opponent plays king c6 and I play king a5. And so now, if this bishop moves somewhere along this diagonal, then... Uh, 
things are going to be bad for my opponent. Like if they go here, it's stalemate, right? Oh no, because I can take this pawn. So I play e4, I take the pawn, because again, now I'm totally cut off. If I can go here, and then again, if this bishop ends up on this diagonal, great. And my opponent does play bishop e3, which I was confused by, but I moved quickly, because I was like, look, I'm trying to get stalemated, so if you want to get stalemated, don't give your opponent time to think. Just, just go ahead and move. So I, I played a5. My opponent plays... My opponent was trying to... They were like, look, I'm just trying to... Trying to he didn't want my king to be able to get around here and to be able to push this pawn. He was like, I'm afraid of, of you eventually pushing your pawn. So, like, for example, if he goes here, if he goes something like this, he didn't want uh, this, this, uh, this, this. And obviously, I'm still far from queening, but he was like, look, I don't want your king to get around here. This is going to be bad for me. It is not bad for him, but that's what he was worried about. So, I, so my opponent plays here, and I play this. And any bishop move along this diagonal, and it's stalemate. Except for this one, which my opponent immediately played. And then was like, oh, wait, no, is that? And I was like, no, it's not stalemate. And I took their bishop, which is the only legal move I have in the position. If you look at the computer, and it's like, what are the lines? And it's like, the lines are, you take it. So then my opponent takes, I play king a7, b5, king a5. You know, we're just, we wait, they queen, I move around, and eventually they move over and um, they uh, checkmate me on g7. So if we take a look at the, the game review... Um, I played 77.3. Obviously, I played that one blunder in the beginning of the game, and that was enough for, for things to be bad. And then I played, you know, I played a couple of great moves. I did all right. Nothing nothing brilliant or anything, but I, I feel like I gave it a real shot here. My opponent played 86.5. Obviously, they played more accurately. They were playing in winning positions. It's a lot easier for them to play the correct moves. Playing, like, the least losing move isn't always, like, the most correct thing to do because I'm not a computer, and it's like that if we, you know... Two computers will pay that will both recognize that all the moves are losing, and so then they'll play the move that is like least losing, so that it takes the longest. But I was playing for practical chances, so like this, that's why I titled the video um, uh, "A Tactics Exercise" because, or whatever it is that I called it, because I just tried to give my opponents uh, like tactical puzzles, and if they weren't going to solve any of them, then I would have some chances, and it almost worked. They almost stalemated me, um, so I feel all right about that. Anyways, let's take a look at how the rating changed. All right, so for round three, we were playing somebody with a uh, provisional rating. Uh, actually, they were completely unrated, but uh, I figured out that their post-tournament provisional rating is 1283, and we did lose, so our turn performance drops all the way to 961, and our new rating is 1105, so that was actually a pretty big hit. Um, that mistake at the beginning of the game really cost us. Yeah, again, you can see that that tactical mistake was really problematic for us. That caused a much bigger shift than anything else. Uh, a big drop for us after round three. Um, no big deal, but there it is. Well, guys, it was a rough round, but um, that's okay. Uh, so we played e4, our opponent plays e5, we play f4, we play our king's gambit, they take, like things are going as we expect them to. Uh, we take advantage of a bunch of tactics, and then um, in a certain position, I think that I'm winning a free pawn by taking bishop takes f7, and so my opponent takes with their king, and then I play knight takes g5, opening up, uh, it's a check on their king, and it opens up an attack on... Uh, their bishop with my queen, so those two are staring at each other. So the thought is, it's check, they move back with their king, I take the bishop, I lost a bishop, I gained a bishop, and I gained a pawn. Um, but my opponent could take my g5 knight with my with their queen. Um, so that ended up being pretty rough, actually. We ended up down a piece for a pawn, uh, and then we turned in another couple of pawns. And so from that point, it's mostly about making it a tactics exercise for your opponent, uh, which I did. And so we played a bunch of tricky things, we restricted a bunch of their kingside pieces, we managed to get some stuff. I don't know whether or not the way that I played is the most resilient, according to the computer. Like, perhaps there's enough activity uh, in that position anyways. I doubt it, but um, we played well. In fact, uh, there was a certain point where my opponent stopped note-taking, um, and I I didn't stop. Because first, it was weird. My opponent didn't have a... My opponent had a clock, but a clock that wouldn't increment. And I uh, left my clock at the last turn chess tournament that I went to, I think. So I need to order a new one. Um... But so we played without a clock, which is what we agreed to, uh, which is fine. Um, but it meant that like it was hard to tell how much time was passing. Anyways, at a certain point, they stopped note-taking, which I don't think they're allowed to do. Um, but it bothered me a little bit. But if I'm being honest, it only bothered me because I was losing. Like, you know, sometimes you just get sort of like, heh, about stuff. But I didn't say anything. We kept playing. Uh, and eventually I had to like, I had two pass pawns on the king side that I was pushing. And that just ended up not quite being enough compensation Uh there, like, I was tying down a bunch of his pieces, but his pieces were also over there, were over there, like, defending against the past pawns, so it was rough. So I could have, like, just sort of exfiltrated and, and sort of tried to just play a piece down and, and trade everything until I get a piece, but I don't think that was going to work, so I was fine with the way that I played, and then, uh, at the point when I, like, lost all of my material, my opponent, uh, 
you know, push their pawn and try to box my king out and do a bunch of stuff. And at a certain point, they basically, they locked into not stalemating me. Uh, there was a position uh, played where if they moved their bishop anywhere except for one square along a certain diagonal, it would stalemate me. And they happened to choose the only square that gave me a legal move, which sacrificed their bishop for a pawn. Um, so they played that move and they're like, oh no, wait. And then I was like, no, it's not stalemate. And they're like, oh. And I, I took with the pawn, and they're like, oh, oh, yeah, geez, right. Um, but, like, after the game, we talked about it, and I was like, that's why I kept playing. Like, I could tell you might be a little bit annoyed that I was playing on, because uh, you stopped taking notes, but, like, you can see why. Like, I made it a tactics exercise, and you almost messed up. Um, so, you know, I, I'm pretty proud of the way that I tried to use tactics to my advantage, uh, and my opponent just happened to see a bunch of them. But I gave my opponent opportunities to make mistakes, just like I did in the second game, and uh, they happen to they happen to play through. So, you know, they, they've played all right thus far. Uh, we'll have to see. They're provisionally rated because they're unrated. So uh, one really high rated opponent, one really low rated opponent, and then like another really low rated opponent that we beat. So like this is not going to do great for our tournament standings. Um, but us losing to them improves their provisional rating, which means that it has less of an impact on what our uh, rating is. So that's positive. Anyways, um, I've got hmm, 35 minutes until the beginning of round four. So I'm going to go get some food because I haven't eaten anything all day. Um, Maybe I won't get food. Maybe I don't have enough time, but I'm going to decide if I want to get some food before the last round. And then we've got one more. Uh, so we're going to be playing black. We'll play against somebody who's also had a rough day, and we're going to try and be resilient here. Uh, if I'm being honest, uh, I was tired from the second game, and I got lazy at the beginning of the third game, and that's why I miscalculated that line. If I uh, had paid a little bit more attention, I would have realized that they had the opportunity to play queen takes. All right. I'll see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.